Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, January 13th of 2017. My son, about a week ago, ordered a nice uh, laptop from Dell Computer. Uh, I tried to talk him into ordering from Amazon. He could have had it the same day or the next day. Uh, he's still waiting for it. Of course, uh, Dell told him that they would ship it. Uh, I'm not sure if they told him they would ship it between the 13th or the and the 18th, or whether they said that they would uh, ship it between the third. Well, he hadn't received it. Today's the 13th, so obviously, so uh, it's going to be a nice uh, laptop. He. Supposedly, it, uh, it's a new one from them, you know, a new model. And uh, he got it for 800 and they had it was $300 off. So that's a nice, you know, because you, you can get a nice laptop for, you know, $400, maybe a little less. So I'll be anxious to see it. I don't care for laptops at all. I've had a ton of uh, computers over the year, over the years. My first computer was in 1987, I think, Radio Shack Model 1, unless you count the Texas Instrument TI-58 programmable calculator that I had before that, because it was a mini, I had a lot of fun with that, that was a, like a mini computer. Uh, after that, I had a, well, of course, I had a VIC-20 computer, Commodore VIC-20. had a Commodore 64. I had a bunch of Commodore 64s. They were so inexpensive, they worked so great. I'd have one for my bulletin board system running for years. I had one just sitting there to do the stuff I wanted to do. and had another one in the other room to do, do stuff. Uh, I had... Uh, the Commodore 64, which was a massive case, and you opened it up, and the computer screen was color, and it was about so big that, and I couldn't, I had normal maybe eyesight back then, and I couldn't even see, the, I mean, it was, I think it was built like a tank. Uh, I had uh, Radio Shack, Tandy, 1000A, then I had a Tandy 1000 or something. I had two Radio Shack Model 2000 computers, because back then IBM everybody wanted was waiting for IBM and then of course IBM came you know out with they came out well IBM computers came out and then uh, IBM computer came with no hard drives I don't believe or if it, or if it came with one it was an extreme a extremely small one and the Tandy 2000 from Radio Shack came with a five megabyte uh, hard drive. The IBM compatible computers had a floppy drive that was 360K of storage. Of course, it was the big ones. And the Tandy 2000 had, 700, it had you know, a floppy drive and it had 780 and then there was other things that were better about the Tandy 2000, but everybody said, and everybody wanted, you know, waiting for IBM or when IBM came, when the PC came, the Tandy 2000 was like 95% compatible, but they didn't, people didn't care. They wanted a, a PC computer. Oh, let's see, I had... Uh, the Radio Shack, 
portable. What was that? The Model 100. Very small, you know, small screen on it. It was not bad. I mean, for the day, it wasn't. It wasn't bad. Uh, and then just on, you know, on and on. Uh, I don't have all that. Oh, you wonder about my hat? Well, uh, President-elect Trump will become President of the United States in seven days. I'm getting my Russian hat ready because uh, it appears he might be an agent of uh, Russia. And so I just thought I'd, you know, what is it? I'm getting ready. Good, good, Jadanya. Is that it? How you say in Russian? Uh, good morning or good afternoon or something like. I just thought I should get. You know. Uh oh. That doesn't sound good. Uh, Trump's special security people have probably been. Mo Let me check on that. I'm afraid I'm being monitored by the. I understand, I, or I, maybe I, did I hear it or did I just make it up? I think that uh, the voice of America is going to be replaced by Russia today. So uh, that will probably, and Trump acts like, uh, President-elect Trump acts like he's going to save us some money somehow. So I guess what he will do is privatize the voice of America and let Russia today will probably take over that. He'll make some, he may already have the deals done in uh, Moscow. Uh, what did I want to? That's not it. Where is it? Oh, okay. Thank God. I thought uh, KGB, which Putin used to be, uh, and I thought they were monitoring me, and maybe I was, I might not have to, I'm going to keep this hat on. I'm going to try to get the hammer and sickle. I know Russia may have done away with the hammer and sickle. Uh, what it, well, Trump will be selling official Russian hats for us, and I'm sure instead of the American uh, pens that Everybody wear all the Congress people and people like that, you know, that they wear. And I kind of suspect that uh, everybody that wears probably will have to check with Trump on the back side of his American, at the beginning when he wears the American flag pin, probably on the back will be the uh, Russian flag. We'll probably have to, well, of course, I wouldn't want to try to go up and grab his American flag off his lapel and see. Uh, might not be a good idea. Come on, I want a giant jackpot here. Made to win a lottery. I think if I won a lottery, I would, uh, I think I'd move to New Zealand. I think that would be. Australia, of course, is always, uh, when you pick great places to live. They're like uh, Australia is at the top of the list. Uh, people that choose when they have these things you see online, you know, the best city, uh, the 10 best cities. It's like Melbourne and Sydney or like one and two or something like that on the list, on every list. But I think New Zealand might be a little further away and uh, until Trump resigns or is impeached, I guess New Zealand might be the as far away as you could get. But Australia would be nice. But I need to win a lottery. Of course, this is not.
course, this is not, that was not uh, something you could actually win real money at. Where was I? Uh, I got sidetracked from the very beginning. I think it's my hat. I think there's a little headphone up there. Well, of course, they went with my Russian hat. They wouldn't be telling me to say what I've been saying. So, there probably will be in our Russian hat some type of electronic device. And if you uh, think incorrectly, you will get a shock of some sort. Of course, a sock, sh sock, sock. Uh, the shock for me was the Republican Party picking Donald Trump to be their candidate. Uh, and then the shock for me was the American people electing Donald Trump as president. I mentioned this before. Uh, I mean, I was, I was totally uh Totally wrong. I didn't think that Donald Trump, and I, I think in the beginning he didn't really want to be. I think he was just, you know what? I want to see Donald Trump's birth certificate. I want to see his birth certificate. I demand to see Donald Trump's birth certificate. <laughs> I bet you that if he showed his birth certificate, that it would be... Uh, See, I had a birth certificate. I was born in Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri, in 1941. And I had this birth certificate all my life. Um, well, my life's not over yet, except Donald Trump is president. Uh, I had that certificate. And I had to use it. I had to show it a few times. Uh, went down to when I was married with, we, had, we only had two children then. Well, Darlene was pregnant with uh, Hillary. No. So we had LaDonna and Hillary. So pregnant with Ken. Uh, so if you can cross over into Mexico, just, you know, go over from the United States. Well, until Donald Trump builds his wall that is going to cost uh, billions and billions and billions. It'll be more expensive than the Manhattan Project, more expensive than going to the moon, more expensive than aircraft carriers and fighter jets and bombers and everything. It's going to be so expensive. And he builds it and uh but as of now you can you're not you know i can cross over but if you just cross over for the day or whatever you just go over you know i guess you show who you are wave and uh maybe not even wave just go on over but if you're going to be there for longer than i don't know a day, two days, three days, whatever it is. You have to have a permit and all that type of stuff. So I used my uh, birth certificate and Darlene used her birth certificate. I knew so little about uh, the history of Mexico. I mean, I know a little bit, but I really didn't know. I, you know, so we had, I told Darlene, well, you know, well, we don't need the birth certificates for uh, our kids. Uh, you know, they're, but we have the baptismal certificates here. Uh, we'll just use that because Mexico is a Catholic country. Got to the border, drove up, uh, went in to get everything taken care of with the certificates. And Nobody spoke English or else they pretended that they didn't. And I showed my birth certificate, which it turns out is not a birth certificate. Uh, 
and Darlene's birth certificate and the baptismal, and they would not take the, the you know they needed, but not take the uh, baptismal certificates. So went out to the car, got in the car, told Darlene. Uh, And she started crying and sobbing because we were planning, you know, we were, we were, and we did end up, you know, we were driving all the way through Mexico, you know, uh, or going to, and we did. Uh, so then I pulled out to turn around to go back into the United States and got, they got into the line to get back into the United States. I never actually got into Mexico, I don't think. And uh, then it was, you know, had to deal with the American getting in. Uh, got in and I drove to a used car dealer who had a Notary Republic. And I have had, I, well, I guess I went to a motel and typed up a letter stating that LaDonna Howard and Hillary Howard were the children of, uh, you know, James J. Howard and Darlene Howard, U.S. citizens or whatever, and then had a car dealer notarize it. And then the next day, uh, we drove over to go into Mexico, and, and those those people spoke English, and they didn't care what we had. It was just, you know, didn't even look at it, stamp, stamp, stamp everything. And we were in Mexico. Uh, so that birth certificate that birth certificate that I used until uh, a year ago or something like that, and I'm 75 years old, I went and I used it, you know, of course, many times. Uh, I went to get a Texas state ID and uh, it turns out that this, and then when I looked at it, Danny, you know, it had said that, and I, and that, I guess that this was common. The hospital or whatever would, uh, well, you know, actually, no, um, yeah. The hospital would give you when you when your kid was born and I don't know for how long but they maybe still they gave you a thing that tells you you know this is certification that your birth that the birth has been reported to in, the, in my case to Jefferson City Missouri and uh, so it wasn't an official birth certificate the uh, Texas uh, Department of Registration, they caught it. So I had to uh, get a real birth certificate. Uh, oh, I wanted to... No, no, I wanted to go to my channel here. wanted to show you that I have, I mentioned it, I think in the last couple of videos, it took me 11 years, but I have now, now it's 2015, but I, I made it to 2000 subscribers from my YouTube channel. 2000 subscribers, 11 years, but I'm at 2015 now I have, but what just happened, if you notice here, if this shows my, right here, my uh, YouTube site has had over a million views. So, we made it, we had a couple of uh, milestones. I'm a fan of the big, the big, <laughs> of the Young Turks on YouTube. Uh... They're 
liberal uh, news site on YouTube. Uh, I've been watching a few. Louis Rossman, he's in New York City and has a uh, electronic repair shop there. And he does live streaming video, and you'll see he has a microscope so that he can uh, look at the circuit board, which he which has a video out that you can see. And you see him, he's talking and uh, soldering and repairing printed circuit boards and uh, computers, all types of stuff. And that's kind of interesting. I'm not sure how. And... Uh, Space video, I think that's the feed from the International Space Station that you can, uh, oh, <clears throat> did you ever see the movie? I think it's a movie called A Series of Unfortunate Events. Uh, Lee Moore Snickers or Snickets or whatever that is. I watched that movie, I don't know, a few years ago. I thought it was really great. Now there is a new on Netflix. You can watch it on Netflix Prime, I guess. And uh, our video episodes, I'm up to episode number three, getting ready to begin. And I love the way it's presented, the way they're doing it. Uh, check it out. I don't know if you like it or not, but check it out it's uh, really good i really creative i think um pbs news hour I, I i used to watch it all the time but i i try to catch on friday at the uh, on the friday show the two commentators uh for a few minutes discussing what's been going on for the last week Ham Radio 2.0, that, uh, I try to watch the new videos that he puts out. He's in, um, this area. He has a, he sells computer equipment, right? uh, sells ham radio equipment. And he, um, uh, is into, big time into digital ham radio and I have a couple of digital inexpensive digital ham radios in addition to my analog HT and boogie 2988 I uh, for some reason I well I got other stuff going on. I'm watching fewer of his ep of his things but I do try to catch and especially when he's talking about when he's just sort of doing a video blog where he's just talking about stuff and telling you what's going on uh, with his life. And uh, he has a, a weight problem and he has a lot of health problems. And uh, he's concerned. I don't think he's a Democrat, but uh, I mean, he's not. What he is concerned about is uh, the repeal of Obamacare, the Affordable Health Act, because with his, all of his health problems in any ways, I, I think close to 500 pounds, uh, he's got a lot of health problems and he hasn't been able to get health insurance. And uh, finally, he, with, a, with uh, Obamacare, uh, because the insurance companies cannot reject people for pre-existing conditions, he's been able to get health care. So he's he's really concerned about what's going to happen if they repeal Obamacare. Uh, Philip DeFranco, I don't know about about him. I I watched some of his stuff, but. So I have a much, much more, I have a, I have a more. Okay. Uh, 
the last comment that I had just a little bit ago that was added to I uh, I did a on December 12th of 2016 32 days ago I posted Donald Trump cost Lockheed Martin four billion dollars with one tweet and I just uh, a few hours ago had a uh, comment left and he says how dare Donald Trump save taxpayers money we should definitely be stiff to pay five billion dollars for a one billion dollar plane so my reply to him that I just posted was you think president-elect Donald Trump cares about you or taxpayers or anyone else besides himself question mark my god enjoy president Trump my guess is that he does not make it for his four-year term he will have to resign due to political corruption I think in years ahead if you look up political corruption you will find his photo political corruption is the use of powers by government officials for illegitimate private gain unquote. he has not even taken office yet and we can see what is going to happen to him now I'm not a hundred percent sure where he stands on Obamacare but we know where the Republican Party stands on it. They voted 60 times during the last eight years to do away with it. It looks like 30 million people are going to be without medical care. It looks like all the benefits and savings that would come from it going down the drain. Remember the GOP was never for medical care for the American people. So Obamacare was set up for states to have insurance exchanges on the state level. Almost every one of the Republican governors, and there are 33 of them, refused to set up a insurance exchange in their state. For eight years, the Republicans did everything they could to try and make sure the health care for all Americans failed. I hope that we have not elected an agent of Russia as President of the United States. 7 more days and you'll get President Trump. God help us all. Ah. I'm using a program again here that I have tried in the past and uh, tested in the past sort of one of the reasons for this it's uh, what the heck is it called oh maybe it'll show up here so, oh screencast o -Matic, which you can use for free but you can also pay and of course I paid and it does screen record so I can record the screen uh, also I could have it running a video or running the camera uh, but I'm running the camera program here, you know, but uh, it, uh, and the only thing I think that my problem was in the past, I think it only saves things in AVI format, and I'm not sure what the quality, what the quality is going to be, so this is sort of a test again, because I can't remember when I did the two or three tests in the past, I can't remember, I'm old. Oh, what I started to say, I think, and maybe didn't finish, but I've mentioned this many times. I didn't think that Donald Trump would uh, really want to be president. I think he does now, you know, but I don't think in the beginning that he thought that, that he had any chance or that uh, uh, I didn't think the Republicans would pick him as their candidate. I did not think the American people would, uh, and even when they, the polls there before the, you know, were, were saying, well, it's pretty close, but 
looks like Hillary is going to, you know, which, of course, she did win popular vote by, I think, over three million. But uh, I didn't think the American people, I thought that even when they said, well, the polls, I thought, no, when Republicans, you know, Christian fundamentalists, uh, even pro-gun people that only think about guns only, I thought really that when most of those people just either would stay home and say, oh, no, I can't vote, I hate Hillary. And I was not a Hillary uh, fan. I wanted the Democratic Party to have Bernie or uh, Biden or anybody other than Hillary. I didn't want Hillary Clinton. Uh, but I mean, I couldn't vote for Donald Trump, you know. But I thought that when the American people, I, my friend, I got a friend that I, uh, we discussed politics by email. You know, and he was saying, you know, it's, no, be close. And then I said, I'm, no, and the American people, when they go into that booth, either they'll stay home or they'll go in the booth and say, I hate Hillary, but no, I cannot. I got to vote. For, I got to vote for the Democrat. I didn't think they would. You know, I'm much upset that, I mean, Donald Trump is Donald Trump. I've sort of known people like him before. I had I worked for a few people like him before, sort of. Uh, I'm not surprised by Donald Trump. And what I'm devastated about is that the American people, the voters could actually go that, you know, born again, Christian, fundamentalist, religious people, good people, I worked with a lot, and I know a lot, of uh, those people who are good people. I can't believe that after Donald, all that Donald Trump said, you know, before the American people up uh, on the thing saying that, you know, during the uh, Republican debate that, I have small hands, by the way, <laughs> that uh, maybe I need some type of a, some way optical with the cameras where I could uh, there now it's still my hand still looks small damn I couldn't believe you know he's up there and he says he, he has a big hand say I have a big hand and I uh, have a big penis it, you know he said that uh, couldn't believe the other things that he said I couldn't believe that these for that for that alone that I can not believe that these religious people would go in and flip the switch for him and other things that he said. And remember when he was having, when he was up on the uh, debate stage, and I'm not sure, I think that was maybe when he was debating Hillary, he said, you know, during the debate to the American people on television, he said, I, I hope and I urge and, you know, the uh, Russian government to release the Hillary's emails, release her, you know, <laughs> and uh, my God, that's, I want to say treason, it's, I mean, it's un-American, it's, uh, so I just couldn't believe that he would be, so I, my political, uh, don't go bet any money on, you know, Donald Trump on, on because based on what I said about him being having to resign. I I do believe, and I said this. I think, and I'm not sure if I said it on a video or if I put it on my blog. Uh, another thing that that bothers me, you know, one is he, I, Donald Trump. You know, he's an asshole, president elect Donald Trump as an asshole uh, and stupid. And really, I know we hate, we hate Washington, D.C., we hate Congress. Uh, we don't like the way things have gone and whatever, but you do want somebody who has some political know-how and understands the Constitution and the government and how it works. You really do. Uh, I'm not in favor of 
term limits, which the Supreme Court ruled anyway was unconstitutional. Uh, I mean, the, the term limits are vo being voted out. I wouldn't, I don't have any objection to at all to uh, the American people. I wish they would do it uh, back in your congressional district. Uh, you know, you tell your congressman, I want you to do such and such. And if you don't do it, then I'm voting you out. But to replace everybody in the government with uh, a Ross Perot or a Donald Trump is not, would not be good. You do, actually, you do need people there who know how the system works and who understand and who have a history or they know history. But, oh, what I was going to say is um, uh, oh, that I hate one that the American people that they could have the mentality to do what they did and I hate it that Donald Trump's name for all time, as long as the United States exists, and I'm not sure if we vote people in like Donald Trump, how long we will continue to be, you know, the nation that we are. But I just hate it that his name will be there with, with the other presidents of the United States that places where they have in Washington, D.C., and in libraries and museums and places like that, there's going to be, you know, painting of George Washington and photograph or painting of Abraham Lincoln, photograph of, you know, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry Truman, Eisenhower. John F. Kennedy. President Bush won. I don't, well, I don't know. Uh, President Obama. His, you know, Trump is going to be in there with, with those. I do think it's going to be sort of, I mean, President Bush too. Uh, I mean, he's lucky. He has, you know, he's been picked as the worst president of the United States, at least for sure, the wor maybe the worst president of, you know, like, modern times. President Bush was the worst. Worse than, worse than Nixon, of course. Uh, now he's not. Now I, now we, you know, uh, communists like me, you know, liberal Democrats or whatever. Now we go like, well, Bush wasn't so bad. <laughs> Wish we had Bush back. Let's change the Constitution and let him run again. Uh, but when you look at the list of the American presidents, and I mentioned this the other day, but I'll mention it again because I'm not sure if I did it in a video or if I did it. Uh, Ulysses S. Grant, who was a good, a good man, uh, but sort of a bad president because there was the corruption in uh, his presidency. He didn't do any of the corruption. He didn't do any of the stealing, but he picked people that were not good, that did do political corruption. His is listed as the historians list him as his presidency as the worst for corruption of all of the presidents. And uh, then you pick uh, who was the other. Oh, no, I can't remember. I'm like, uh, prayer, uh, former governor Rick Perry. I can't remember. 
so it was corruption and something else. What was the other bad thing? Not Hoover. Who, I can't remember that now, the other one, but Donald Trump, I think, will go, I think he will replace. He'll be, when you, when people say, when the historians say this is the worst, uh, oh, I know, yeah. Uh, and then the administration that had the most criminals in it, the most felons, the most who went to prison, the most who were removed from office, Ronald Reagan's administration. So I think what's going to happen is that uh, historians are going to, when they look at things, they're going to say, well, the worst one, the worst administration for corruption, Donald Trump's. The worst one for felons and uh, criminals or whatever, Donald Trump. Uh, by the way, the interesting thing about uh, the list of great presidents that you see from time to time, they'll have a thing like, you know, the best, the best presidents, the 10 best presidents, or the best, fifth, the best 15 presidents, or different things like that. It's uh, always, you know, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, Harry Truman, which is a shock to a lot of people. Uh, and, you know, Republicans will go, a lot of Republican friends of mine or whatever, will go, oh, that's liberal, uh, you know, those are liberal, they're college professors, they're college, you know, they're, uh, that, that pick those, are historians, and that's not accurate, they're just picking Democrats or, uh, but I was sort of surprised myself because now what they what they do when you see some of those lists, uh, the more ones that are a little more technical or give you more information, you know, they take and come up with the list that all the historians agree. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. Now they might think it. They might be Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. You know, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry Truman. Uh, and then, of course, the rest of them, you know, the rest of them. But now what they do with a lot of those is they, when they poll the historians, they ask them, what's your political persuasion or who did you vote for in the last election or whatever. Now, of course, not all of the professors are going to say, some of them would just say, well, I'm, I'm not, you know, but of the ones that do and everything, the ones that the Republican or, you know, the right uh, ones that are leaning to the conservative side, they, the, the, the list is basically the same. It's definitely the same for like the first, you know, the, the 10 greatest presidents. Uh, it's definitely the same, same for that as the ones that are, that say they're, you know, the, that are liberal. So, Well, I guess I've given this enough time. I, I wonder how big this file is going to be because it's going to be an AVI file. I have converters, though, that can convert it. But I wonder how big it's going to be. And I wonder what the quality of the video is going to be. Anyway, I think I've driven away. I, I had to keep this going so I, until I finally drove away all the Trump people, <laughs> all the Republicans. And everybody else, I bet you, however long this has been. Oh, I got a timer. It's been 45 minutes. So I wonder how long it took before. Of course, uh, an unfortunate thing, and I've commented about, and other people, of course, have commented about this. It's really bad that we don't have a dialogue with each other anymore. That, uh, like when I was, well, like working at Research Belton Hospital, I was the only liberal. They would wait for me. They really actually would wait 
for me to come in like at 10 o'clock at night. They'd be lined up there. If they, if they didn't have patients there, they'd be lined up. The ER doctor and everybody did. When I did so when I came in, they could find out, you know, what the liberal communist, what his position was on it. And I guess they had little debates. Well, no, he really won't be. You know, he's a he's a liberal, but he won't be. He won't take this this position. This you know, this time. I remember after the Rodney when the Rodney King rioting was going on, or whatever. They were waiting for me at ten o'clock when I came in. What do you think about the rioting out there in you know, uh, California? And then I when I came in, uh, they were lined up. That's when the, when, uh, was that Bush Sr.? When I came in and they said, uh, Dukakis, who I wasn't a fan of Dukakis, but I mean, I, when I came in, Dukakis, we want to know what you think about him. He, he's a member of the ACLU. ACLU, what do you think about that? What do you think about? And I, and I said, uh, oh, you mean to tell me that, uh, Let's see, was that when President Bush was president or running for a second term? No. Can't remember. No, I can't remember. No, it, would have been, it must have been his first term, you know, because, yeah, it must have been his first term. So it would be after Reagan, I think. But anyway, so I, when I came in, you know, they, uh, they were, and I said, well, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that president that uh, I guess well, we, maybe was he? Well, that's, you mean to tell me that Bush is not a member of the ACLU, and you're going to vote for him? And they were like, "What?" I said, "You mean you're going to vote for the ACLU? Sole purpose is the defense of the Bill of Rights, the first ten amendments to the Constitution. That's what they do. They defend and protect the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment, the first uh, ten amendments." to the Constitution. You mean to tell me you're going to vote for a man for President of the United States who doesn't believe in freedom of speech, freedom of religion, uh, Second Amendment that people can own firearms? Oh, he's... And they just kept going on and I just kept, answer, you know, I just kept answering them back and, uh, and they, you know, they said something and <clears throat> I said, well, I'm a member of the ACLU. You are not. I said, yes, I am. You are not a member of the ACLU. And I pulled out my billfold, put out my ACLU card, and they, get out of here, Jim, get out of here. <laughs> so, that was sort of fun. Uh, I wasn't, I mean, I've always been short of, well, I was okay when I, I haven't always been poor. I wasn't poor until I got a divorce. Uh, I didn't get married till I was 26, and I lived with my parents till I was 26, which nowadays that's not unusual, but back then I think it was sort of unusual. Uh, so I had plenty of money. I was making, I was working as a welder, making really good money, and uh, my car, everything was paid for. The only reason I ever took out uh, something on credit was to make sure that I had credit established or whatever, but my car was paid for. Uh, I had, I invested, I was investing in stocks. I uh, owned, I'm not sure it was called, a mutual, was it a mutual fund or IRA? I can't remember back then what it was. And I had money in that. Of course, I made the classic mistake. I'm not sure if they still do that. They still have those. Made the classic mistake that they tell you not to make. And that is I signed up for a plan and then I had them take out their commission, you know, in the beginning. And I should have been signed up for a plan that didn't have commission going to them. I mean, I, so I paid up front a bunch of money to them. But I had, so I, I got married at age 26. Uh, we uh, married 12 years. <clears throat> we had two cars that were paid for. Uh, we had a nice house in the suburbs. Uh, we weren't 
then I was working while well, we had a business for a couple of businesses and uh, <clears throat> whatever. Then I was working hospital security, making okay money, a lot more than people thought, although things started going downhill <clears throat> on the pay uh, because the hospital started screwing us. <clears throat> but uh, like when I was working in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, the paramedics, now their paramedics run the ambulance service or whatever. Now they actually were making good money because they were working a lot of overtime. But so far as their hourly pay, uh, they made less than we did. And uh, a lot of police departments made less than hospital security was making. And a lot of, and then there were other security, you know, jobs, Bendix or whatever they were called at that time, where police officers on police departments would quit and go to work security there because the money was a lot better and the benefits were good. And then I got about 1982, 81, someplace in there, I got divorced. That's a long time ago. And four children paid child support kept them insured. I kept, you know, I always worked and there was a few jobs I would have liked to change, but it was, I made sure I had health, you know, but I've been poor ever since. And now I'm retired. Of course, I made I made mistakes. I mean, uh, tax shelter annuities that were, you know, I worked for one hospital, had a tax shelter annuity. When I left the hospital, I, ta I cashed that in, bought computer equipment, worked at another hospital for system for 18 years. I uh, Retired from there and I cashed in my tax sheltered annuity to spend it on computer equipment. I uh, sold a domain name for $10,000. Guess what I spent that money on? Computer equipment. I mean, I got a few other little things, you know. But I've been, I have been poor. I've been uh, on Facebook and whatever. There's some type of uh, virus going around that is making people really, really sick. I don't know if it's, I need to go to the catch site that lets you know where it, where the current virus is. I didn't get a flu shot this year. I'm not sure if it is the flu or something something else. Uh, I live in an apartment complex. Back apartment or whatever. And there's an apartment upstairs. When I moved, when I, when I first moved to this apartment complex, we, I was next door, but upstairs on the second floor. Thank God I moved for, moved down eventually to the ground floor, I don't think I could, I would have trouble getting myself up just to the second floor now, and I wouldn't be able to carry groceries up, two liter bottles of Coke and stuff up the stairs. I, I mean, I'd have to do it. I don't know how I would do it, but, uh, thank, but, so anyway, moved into here and I don't know, for for several years, for a long time, I didn't, I never heard a sound from upstairs. And there was a, turned out, a young girl that lived there, never, never heard a sound from up there. And then she moved out. And now, I'm not sure if we're on our third or fourth, and they just moved out. People, and I do hear, with them, I've heard, with all of them, I've heard, I hear uh, the last, seems like all of them. 
the, you know, in order to get to the upstairs, they walk around here and go up and I, and there are, it'll be two, uh, two or three o'clock. It doesn't matter to me because <clears throat> I'm usually up. <clears throat> but I, they go by and I hear them talking two or three o'clock in the morning as they go by. And, uh, then <clears throat> seems like most of them, they pound on the stairs as they go go up and then I hear them banging around up up there and then sometimes it's uh so anyway the last people looking at the clock <clears throat> the last people moved out so they come there and up I heard some banging up there so the they come in and they throw their junk out you know which wasn't junk they uh the maintenance people here they come in and now this one here they started taking the people left their stuff left their baby strollers they had two little babies baby stroller their baby baby bed all that kind of everything was left here and the maintenance guy came in <clears throat> and usually what they do is before there was two maintenance guys working in and they just took their stuff and threw it down in it so it was smashing chairs tables or whatever and they put it in the trash this time the guy started taking the stuff out and right away somebody who doesn't even live here apparently uh, knew what was going on and came and uh, they got the stuff for themselves a nice couch end tables uh, the baby bed and the baby strollers or whatever, I, th I think that all went into the trash. But, uh, so anyway, they come in and they immediately take out the carpeting. Then they have some painters, well, then the maintenance, of course, the maintenance guy is going to have to do some stuff. I'm not sure what they do. They have to do some stuff. Then they have painters come in that, you know, don't work their contract or whatever. They come in and they paint the place real fast they don't worry too much about they cover up everything and uh, then they have a couple cleaning ladies that again are contract probably a kind of a nice deal for them you know you I think you could probably come in when you you know when you wanted to I mean they want it done right away but then they have the cleaning ladies come in and and clean the place and then they rent these places out fast so actually they're they're nice apartments because uh one thing the way they are designed and the walls and uh, like the people upstairs i never hear their television set or a radio or whatever i hear them pounding like they're jumping or whatever they're doing and uh my ex-wife lives in the apartment next door. She keeps her television going 24 hours a day, and it is loud. Uh, and I have hearing loss in both ears. When I go over there, sometimes I just can't stand to be uh, to, to hear the television, and it's difficult to talk to her with the television going. And I never, but I over here next door, I never hear her television set. Uh, my grown son or whatever, his bedroom is would be is right here, right next to mine, and he plays his computer games, and sometimes there it's sometimes it's kind of loud, and I never, never hear a sound. The only sound I've ever heard from his room is when I gave him a scanner, a radio scanner, and it has the. Uh, alarm that goes off if there's a storm warning or whatever and once a week i think it is they do the test that automatically kicks it on and it has a loud tone that i don't think you can adjust so i gave him the scanner and i could hear that over here that thing is loud so i had to go over and i'm not sure if i told him how to disable it or what or take the number out for well it wouldn't work well i don't know if you took the you have to put a number in for where you are 
if you didn't have a number in there, I mean, if you put in like 1111 or something, that might be Washington, D.C., and you'd be getting alarms for Washington, D.C. Okay, this has been an hour, an hour of Jim Howard. What are we going to call, what's the, I don't know, what are we going to call this video? That's help, I need help, Twit TV, or the Twit, you know, site, when they do their videos, they have, whole, they have, you know, all about Android, Windows this week, they have all these different podcasts that are video podcasts also, and there may be two or three people that are uh, <clears throat> doing it when they get done recording it. They also do live streaming all the time. And so you see them talking about, okay, and they'll be asking their chat room, you know, okay, what, what should we call this, you know? And I don't have, so, help, what should I call this? Jim Howard's political bullshit, Jim Howard's communist propaganda, I don't know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. See if I can figure out how I stop this now.